Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Sylvester here once again, and I'm Pika here, and we're back from the Max of Twice. And welcome back to Mars Play of Sonic Unleashed for the Nintendo Wii for slash new PlayStation 2. So last time we actually did manage to done both um, stage worlds, including the uh, the daytime stage in Halaska and three acts in Spigonia Night, which was presumably the one of the most longest videos of all time. And today for this episode, we're about to be continue on and just explore the new world, which was Chunan. Which was, I think it was based off of China, basically, so that's what Professor Pigwell already mentioned this in the last video, so... Yeah, apparently Chunan is gonna be the next destination we're about to be hit into, so... Yeah, as far as winning coordinate of this um, particular country, is I think it might be actually be the third con um, coordinate, or else in the Alaska it was actually the fourth coordinate. So I don't think there's any way to actually restore the fourth coordinate for the time being. So um, anywho though, so here we are at the Chunan, where we're gonna be right off the bat we're gonna have to be the Werehog formation because. I'm assuming if we're actually going to find something more likely to be the moon time, or the, in this case the nighttime key, or in this case a little um, tablet, to actually access to the nighttime stage. So, as usual, we're going to have to find every single townspeople so that whoever will just ask them what we're supposed to do. So, even though they're pretty much um, important to you. As far as the HD version is concerned, uh, in order to actually get into the um, the actual stages, specifically the nighttime stage, that uh, we always have to like keep on um, like finding some clues. Like even though that guy is just blocking your path to actually just to blocking the um, the stage selects in the um, the secondary hub world. But you know, so after when you talk to him into the water flow way, that um, you actually access to the secret shrine of Chunan. And then basically, we're gonna have to find this village elder, so that um, I think the village elder is nowhere to be seen at the moment. So we're gonna have to go ahead and find them, according to what the other um, townspeople, one of the townspeople, has mentioned. So here we go with the third Cardinal Temple, which was the Chunan Temple. And yeah, right off the bat, though, that we actually got four teleportations, so that we can warp any of those. Um, you know, warp temp of the temples we wanted to, but we're not going to warp to Missouri because even then it's pretty much um, done for now for Missouri. Unless if you want to count for these collectibles and such. So the one we're going to be heading to is the nighttime door where we're going to have to come across to even more nighttime stages. Since, you know, last time we actually been to nighttime stages is Spagonia. So anyway, the first um, stage of the nighttime stage in Chunan is known as the Floating Isle. So um, basically, that's uh, we're gonna have to maneuver every single um, area. Now, if you come across into those cracked wall over there, uh, this means you're actually gonna have to beat the crap out of it. And then basically, if you actually try to actually continuously punching it, or even use the Warehammer, that um, you actually just uh, actually break through these uh, walls quite easily and faster. But yeah, all you get in here is just basically just collect balls like rings, as well as some occasional item boxes, including some, um, some collectibles like, you know, contact dogs, movies, and etc. So, um, I think that's mainly the case at this point here, so let's bust out this wall quickly, and, um, yeah, we're gonna have to double check in every single area so that we can actually see the secrets that we can actually find. So, that's how that works basically. So, and also some occasional parts breaking that we have to actually deal with here. And then there's some tr nice little trusty boxes here so that we can actually use that. Well, we don't think it's necessary to use that because I'm assuming that in this level that I don't think we actually, actually have to deal with this annoying wasp enemies. So, I think there's are uh, entirely situational, so... The only time it makes it only situational is the fact that, that you can actually just chuck the boxes at these enemies that we actually did destroy, but these are completely much... You know, somewhat of a different methods, so anyway. So I believe, uh, there's a secret item right there. Now, I've, I believe if you're actually trying to bust out this wall here, and then actually grab ourselves 
one of the force points. And if you actually grab that, um, the enemy encounter appears. So it's a bit like more likely if you grab an item, then somehow there's going to be an enemy trap inside. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to notice. So, you know. So a few things we want to mention about something is that, um, recently, that, um, before I, um, noticed something for the release date on certain DVDs that might actually come out. Yeah, during some time until, like, this month, which was actually July. And then, oh god, I almost fell off. Yeah, thank god I did not fall off for that particular death. Because if we fell into the water, then we pretty much guarantee that we can actually restart for that checkpoint system. But even then, that sometimes it's all about some little requirement of the invisible or visible checkpoints. But even then, that once you come to a certain point, and if you die at a certain point of the level, then you can restart the the, um, the safest point of the level. So it's not like how it does in the HD version, where you find the checkpoint gate, and if you do touch it or you go through it, and if you die on a level at any point of the level, and if you drop a checkpoint, then you can actually restart where the checkpoint is. So yeah, as far as when this game is concerned, it's pretty much exactly the same, or in this case, you know. But we'll explain more now when we get to the end of here. So, yeah, it has been about three months since we actually got to come back to this, or four months if you want to count since this is July right now. And then, um, the reason why it has been a very, very long time since we actually record this is because, obviously, because of the playthroughs and all that, that the other toys are still continuing doing. And then, um, also, that uh, we like to take a break on this game. Well, I think we actually, last time we did record this, it was actually during that March this year, which that was the time when, um, almost roughly when Zootropolis was actually launched onto cinemas back then. But speaking of Zootropolis, that I think that DVD release on that um, film, at least in uh, the United Kingdom anyway, it will be releasing on 25th of July. Which is quite close, kind of think about it, until when it gets to like nearly almost at August. That's also not uh, the same applies to that though. Not only do we have one, but two DVDs has been released, going to be released until 25th of July. Uh, which are Zootropolis, like I mentioned earlier, and um, as well as Sonic Boom Mayo Knuckles, which is the third volume of Sonic Boom for the UK's DVD release. So yeah, that's pretty uh, nice to actually just to think about it. But how do we open it. Quite simply just actually just going down here because there was actually a switch there. In this case, I'm gonna look at switch. However, the thing is though, if you come, clo come closer to it though, that time there's gonna be enemy encounters right off the bat, so we're gonna have to make sure that we have to take those guys down, because if you do that, then you should able to access the switch. So, yeah, that's how that works, basically. But if you're assuming, I believe, if you're actually trying to activate the switch, um, that way, they'll actually, um, activate the door opening, so, yeah, that's how this, um, you know, section worked out. But if you somehow go into the, um, like, come into it split, like, um, doors, you probably go on the right, because that will lead you down here. But if you do go into the left, it takes you all the way up, so, yeah, that's the last one I just noticed. So anyways, let's grab some rings here before we actually get ourselves, if not, we actually get some S rings. Like, um, you know... Because, you know, there's going to be a lot of backtracking in the Warehog segments in this version of the game, as opposed to the Xbox 360 version, or the PlayStation 3 version, whatever that, whatever that is. So we can just do, like, some monkey bars, and there we go. The first act of, uh, the nighttime Warehog stage has been completed, and, truth be told, we got an S-Link. Yeah, because all these objectives has been entirely completed. So, once again, we got three Sun Medals, so stage complete, as a matter of fact. And since we got 3,140 points, now we actually get ourselves a new upgrade to our Unleash Bar. Which, that means that we'll actually proceed, or just get a massive upgrade to the, um, the um, Unleash Bar, so that you can actually fill up an entire Unleash Bar even more. For that particular part. So now let's move on to Act 2, which was known as Rising Dragon Falls. I wonder why it says that, that little um, stage's name. Hmm, I wonder why. 
Will possible? We'll have to wait till fun now. So, um, yeah. Another thing is worth noting is that uh, the new The Jungle Book, which was the 2016 version live action film, and it has been confirmed that in a release date in UK for the DVD release, it will be launching until when it's at 22nd of August. Yeah, it's kind of weird that how um, even then it hasn't been quite long since it's going to be released until then. So, um, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool for that little department stuff. But anyway. So anyway, now. And here we actually come across into a different variation of those wizard enemies. You never know the uh, wizard enemies that we've already encountered in Spagonia. Well, here's all the latest color variation, which I think it was actually the purple variation. Yeah, I think that's what it's at. So, yeah, and not to mention we have ourselves some red variations of the regular enemies that we um, saw the blue version of these guys from Apatos, and I think this also applies to um, the Spagodian Knight. So, um, even then, though, that these guys are pretty easy to deal with. Well, some of the enemies are, but some of them are really pain in the bum to deal with. Okay, there goes also an item right there, which is pretty nice to kind of think about. Ah, God, I completely forgot these uh, these swinging saw things can actually hurt you. Yeah, you gotta have to be very careful there, Pinko, just in case you just don't want to get yourself hurt from that part right there. Just wait until they come past. And you notice that little floating enemy right there? I'm pretty sure that in, um, if you're actually trying to grab and hold that for um, a long period of time, if you wait for long enough, I'm pretty sure it actually gives you something a bit more secret than that. Which I'm assuming it was one of these um, item boxes that you can actually find. So, um, yeah, I was wanting to let you guys show you, uh, what we just wanted to show you guys for that, how to get that. But basically, you grab that enemy way over there, and also if you want to actually just swing back and forth into the other side. And then, if you go into that island right there, and then... Yeah, I apologize for the little lacking going on, it always happens in this case, especially for my Wii is actually going to glitch as well. So, we really do apologize. So, anywho, though. Um, oh, God. Dang it. Oh, well. But at least we actually did die right there, but at least that's okay, because even then, though, that uh, we, if you were somehow just think that you might actually try to make him just wait until when the enemy comes by, well, apparently, there's a quicker way to actually get back by just sacrifice yourself. So, that's kind of clever to actually just to say about it. So yeah, for that, um, the, you know, the lacking frame rates, or in this case, the lacking, um, glitch, um, graphical issues, it always happens to us anyway, when we actually especially play the Nintendo Wii titles. I think it's mostly, I don't know why it is, but, um, I don't have, we don't have many issues when it has up on the, um, Nintendo Wii U, Xbox 360, and then we might actually work on a PlayStation 3 for like the, just sometime in this month, so that, um, perhaps maybe I could actually probably do Pac-Man World in some time. So, um, in case if you want to tell for that already, for that spoiler warning, or in this case, spoiler warning. So anyway, though, I don't know why, oh, no, 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 ah, dang it, that dash on control stick screws us up. And we only got one life left though, because if we somehow die one more time, we pretty much get kicked out of the level, and plus it'll actually kick us out from the, um, the world map. So we gotta have to be sure to be very cautious with the extra lives. And plus we don't wanna die though, because you can have that, you know, if we go like get a game level or something, that um, it'll actually just uh, like force us to restart the whole level again, which is not that fun. Especially in the Werehawk's case, so, yeah, before you proceed, and here's one of my favorite parts about this level, is that we can actually travel through the other waterfall itself. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of something related to likely to be, um, what's the, what's the film that is actually related to something? Um, I'm pretty sure, Ice Age, isn't it? Where, with the first film specifically, that, um, one of the, um, come on. This long gone's not even showing up. Oh gosh. I almost died right there. But anyway. Yeah, you remember that part when Sid was actually trying to actually carry that baby going back into its home, home his home app habitat? Well, it's a bit like that. But except that, um, 
it wasn't winter or anything, it's just basically based on China. Yeah, I'm assuming that's what this is now. Oh, the, the noticeable thing though is that since we only have like zero lives at this point, but um, in this case it's one more life, there's no way you can actually get ourselves uh, extra lives back. I mean, the only way you can get extra lives in this version of the game, I'm presuming that if you come across into the um, Gaia gates or something like that, which are basically just a secondary hub world in this version, um, if you collect enough of those um, sun and moon medals, and if you probably noticed about something, is that as soon as you come across into those one of these um, you know, sun and moon medal doors, um, that way that will actually access us to the, um, the secret room itself, which actually contains a bunch of item boxes like collectible items, and the most noticeably though is the extra lives, which in order to actually try to get to that though, that uh, you must be able to figure out some certain puzzles along the way. Now we're probably not going to show you guys for that just because it was um... It might be a bit of a waste of time for me when it comes to recording that, but we just might actually just discuss about some uh, about this. So you know. Girls next to it seem fishy to you. Maybe they've got tuna inside. <laughs> Sorry. So as you can see, that uh, we actually got ourselves a fire to pull out with. And basically, in order to actually get rid of it though, is to use the water barrel. But if you're somehow trying to actually hold down the X button and then you just press A at the same time. Um, that way that will actually extinguish the fire out. So that means we can now actually proceed to the last section of this level, which we're going to have to once again deal with some enemies to deal with. In this case, uh, these Dark Guy manuscripts or something, or Dark Guy looking like enemies. So, um, you know. But before we do anything, let's go ourselves some unraised gauge or unraised points to actually get ourselves some unraised gauge up. So, um, you know, that's all that matters anyway. So we only got to hold out a few of these enemies left. Die! Die! There we go. One of them's dead, and we can sure enough we can take care of the others as well. Huzzah! Yeah, huzzah indeed. Now we can touch the doorway, and presumably we got an S rank right here because you know that Sonic the Warehawks dialogue. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of that. Um, since then, the amount of rings you need to, or uh, the how much forces you need to get, is like 2016. Well, since this was still in 2016, so it's more likely to be a 2016 year reference. How amazing is that? Anyway, though. Since we got enough forces, so now we actually have ourselves a health upgrade. So that means our health bar is now extended. So, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool nonetheless. Oh, let's do one more level. Because we do have some time left. At least we're not going to go over like 45 minutes or something. Unlike um, Banjo Kazooie that um, definitely Twilight Sparkle usually done that but like, not too well ago. Anyway, here we are, Act 3 of Junon Night, and this is actually called Path to Darkness. Don't, please don't tell me it's like Kingdom Hearts all over again when it comes to the path to the darkness, to the realm of the darkness, I should say. Yeah, but it's not that true though, it was just more likely to be just walking around in a China road, or in this case a Dragon Road. But, you know, some little, um, if you see those little, um, pathways, yeah, it's usually like that, but in dark. So anyway though, if you hit up to the rooftop right there, uh, you actually What's get yourself a freebie speech? item, which is in this case a hidden item. Something? So, yeah, pretty cool to actually grab that. And then in here, we need to actually just twist up the switch, or in this case, twist up the lever, so that we can actually, um, defort the, um, the bridge itself, so that we can proceed. Yep. And then, before we uh, proceed, we need to actually get some rings. Because, you know, rings is really good, especially if you want to actually, um... If you almost run out of health, and if you're trying to grab as many rings as you can, then you can rings, go ahead. So, yeah, as you can see, we actually come across into the only robot enemies that in the Werehawk segments. Well, these are the only times that it always happens. But basically, that's, uh, we have ourselves a fan, um, fan blade, blade of robots. Basically, if you come across it towards these very, very dangerous narrow pathways, um, if you saw those little fan blade, um, robot guys that look like that, you can tell, 
But um, those things are trying to blow you out of the level, so you should be very careful and you don't have to actually pull off the main level itself. Plus, you don't have to actually use the bar where you're supposed to jump when it um, almost starts to crumble, because if you made it that jump correctly, then you guess there's another um, hidden item. I mean, granted, it's pretty optional though when it comes to if you're actually doing this playthrough on this, but anyway. Remember that part where we actually did die twice again, and then in the previous level, the dra uh, rising dragon falls? Well, you actually get some lives back when you're trying to uh, proceed to the next act and stuff like that. So luckily though, there's, uh, there's no way you can actually keep the exact same amount of lives when you die from it, so, you know, pretty cool though. So anyway though, because for I consider that the Wii version and the PlayStation 2 version is this is considerably easier than the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 version. Because even then though this I think it's more like the advanced players for the um, the Xbox 360 owners and the PS3 owners for it's more like the advanced advanced version of Sonic Unleashed, whilst this one is pretty much simple for the most part. Anyways, um, you notice something that the, the little um, China um, building right there. Uh, this means is that um, it was actually the end of the level, which we can't get into that just yet though, because we have some enemy encounters to deal with here, which is quite boring, but the, um, you know, the battle theme is constantly playing a lot. Even then, uh, again, you're always going to hear this theme a lot. Like seriously, even then, that it's always everywhere, like every enemy contact we get out to deal with. Anyway though, let's grab some rings here before we do anything. And I think we're pretty much done with this area. And now let's proceed and let's continue. So now we can actually continuously grab some rings here before we get ourselves some health back. Yeah, and then also, in addition to that, that uh, we actually get to check every single pass to actually become hidden when it comes to getting some items. Whenever when we first time playing this version of the game, the only part I, ha I found in a lot of trouble is this section. It's not just a matter of the, um, the timing and whatnot, it's just that every time when Sonic the Werehog does like a double jump ability, I believe unlike the Xbox 360 version, that Sonic the Werehog's double jump gets and uh, grabs this ton of momentum. Like, even then, it can't, it, you can't, like, change directions in midair. Just like how it does in the old school Castlevania game, mostly the first game, the second game, and the third installment. But, um, and then including, um, the new generation, all bloodlines in America. Most of them compared to Super Castlevania 4 or Ground Rondo of Blood, or even Symphony of Night, they can actually get us a mid, um, Jump, mid jump to um, direction, they can actually move whatever you please to, so that's pretty sweet. So, um, from right here, we actually got still some enemy encounters to deal with in this place. Let's see if we can make a leap of faith here so that we don't die from that part because if we die again, though, so we pretty much almost gonna get to that we almost gonna get screwed over with some extra lives. And it's a good thing that we're actually going to be saving up the Unleashed bar for later, because we'll actually talk about that more on that until then. So, if you hop into that island over there, then some more enemy encounters approach. That enemy just somehow just moonwalks off the edge. That's actually pretty crazy, kind of thing to think about it. So here, here's what these are one of the, um, one of the bigger enemies in this game, which I think these are actually called Titan. But I believe that, um, it seems to be a bit tougher though, because even then, that he has his own weapon. It appears to be a wacky wooden thing. But, uh, if you somehow manage to actually... What the heck? <laughs> somehow we manage to entirely beat him up. Like, no problem. Okay, seems fair enough. And let's grab some more forces and whatnot. And after dealing with all sorts of enemies that we actually did demolish, then I think this is the end of a level just right over here. You know, right where the, uh, you know, the China building is. Alongside with the, uh, the door as well. So let's go ahead and end off Act 3. So let's see how we did. So yeah, if Sonic the Werehog says that dialogue, this means I think we got an A rank. I can imagine that. Oh, we're off by 30... I... Um... I'm not sure where we're off by. I think it was roughly, um, uh, 32, um... 
skill points? God dang, that was actually pretty close. But anyway, uh, now we actually get an upgrade to the, uh, the attack level 3, so that means we can actually become even much more stronger than um, his previous efforts. So, we're pretty much almost done with the, uh, the actual um, force um, points that we actually go ahead and deal with. Secret Movie 7, and um, you know, that's all there is to it though. And Secret Evolution 53.